Hi, today we're going to talk about how to start a project in Revit from scratch. And um, when you open Revit, it looks like this. You have the user interface that lists two different types of things that you can start doing in Revit. The top one is projects and the bottom one is families. Projects is where you're going to create your building model. Um, that's where you're going to have all of your drawings and things come together. Families are the components that go into that project. So um, windows, doors, pieces of furniture, cabinetry, um, all of those things that will go into your project are created as a family. They're loaded into the project and they're stored there, but they also have their own separate file designation um, from the project. And so the first thing that we're going to do is um, on this page is we're going to go new under projects. And under the projects selection, we're going to select architectural template um, rather than construction template you know, from the list of templates that's listed there. And we're going to say OK. It's going to very slowly open. OK, um, so when you open Revit, this is the screen that you get. There's this white open space with four um, designations for our exterior elevations. And so any of the building that you do, you want to create inside of these four markers. Um, if it's outside the markers, your exterior building elevation is going to be inside the building, which is not what you want. And so if your building doesn't fit inside these markers, you need to move them out um, so that they sit outside of the building space. Um, over on the left hand side, we have two boxes, one the properties box up on top. And right now, we can see that the properties box is giving me the properties of the floor plan. So that's the element that it's giving me the properties for. Um, on the bottom is our project browser. And that is in that area, we're going to be able to flip through all of our different drawings. So you can see there's floor plan, ceiling plan, which we won't be using. So I'm just going to minimize that and our elevations. And that's our exterior building elevations that you see on the screen there with the four markers um, distinguishing that. So whenever you start a project, the very first thing you want to do is you want to establish your levels. And so this is, you know, how tall is this building? Um, how many stories is it? That sort of thing. That's the very first thing that you want to do. And in order to do that, I need to look at one of these exterior uh, building elevations. It doesn't matter which one. Any one of them is fine. So I'm just going to look at my east um, building elevation. And I'm going to do that by just double clicking on my east building elevation. And you can see that I have two levels here already. And again, that's kind of the standard thing that opens is you have two levels that look like this. So underneath um, level one, I'm going to change that uh, because we're going to have we're going to have a building that has some grade that's below zero. And so I'm going to change this to negative one foot nine inches. And you need to type it in like one foot nine inches. So I need my inch. Um, and feet markers in there, so negative one foot nine inches. And I'm going to change what the designation is that for that. So I'm going to change that to the word grade. And it wants to know if I want to rename all my corresponding views, and I always do. Yes. Um, so then under level two, I'm going to change this to floor uh, because this is my floor level. And again, it asks me, would you like to rename all my corresponding views? I would. And I'm going to change my floor level to zero. Okay. And I'm also just going to adjust the um, the scale because right now we're at eighth of an inch and so I can't really see what's happening here and I'm not going to have any drawings that are that small so in the bottom left hand corner here I have scale I'm going to change that to one half inch equals a foot rather than an eighth of an inch equals a foot you can see that gets a lot bigger there okay so then I'm going to add one more level and that's going to be where our roof level is and so I'm going to do that on the architecture tab um, all the way over on the right I have the datum panel and we're using a ribbon system here in Revit, just like in a lot of other programs. So whenever I'm talking about tabs, I'm talking about these words across the top, architecture, structure, systems, insert. Um, whenever I'm talking about panels, I'm talking about those panels within each of those tabs. So architecture, tab, the datum panel over here on the right, and I'm going to select level. Now I want to go all the way over to the left where until I get this little blue dashed line that you see. And I'm just going to drag that up until it says eight feet. If you can't get it to land exactly on eight feet, not a big deal. You can always adjust it later. And so I have my blue dashed line. It says eight feet. I'm going to click left click on the screen. And I'm going to drag all the way over to the right until I get that blue dashed line again. And I'm going to click. OK, then I'm just going to hit my escape key. And I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to double click on where it says level three. 
and I'm going to change the designation on this to roof bearing. And again, it asked me if I want to rename, and I do. Yes. Okay, so then we have our levels established for the project. Okay, so now that I have that established, I can save my project. I'm just going to go back to my floor plan, so I'm looking at that from the top, um, just because I prefer to look at that view. And I'm going to save my project. So I'm going to go under the big R here, the down arrow, and I'm going to go to Save As, and Project on the top. Now, um, file management is really, really important when it comes to um, your project in Revit. Um, a single Revit drawing, and like I have just a simple um, project here called IMS, and I'm just going to select that. This is just a simple residential project. You can see these about 25 drawings, and those are just the projects. Um, if I go under uh, my families folder and my details folder and that sort of thing, and you see all the different families and details and profiles, um, images that are associated with materials in there. There's about 200 different files that play into just this one project. And so if you had all of those files spread all over your computer, not only would it be difficult for you to find them, but it would also be difficult for Revit to find them. And things like the images, for example, that play into the materials, those need to be associated with the project in that folder. Otherwise, Revit has a difficult time finding them when it goes to re uh, render, especially if you're rendering on the cloud. And so in order to set this up correctly, you want to make sure that you have a folder for your project. Now, I've created one um, called Shed here that I'm working on, and I've saved that inside of my CMGT 1140 um, folder. And so if you have a CMGT uh, 1140 folder you can create a new folder um, by using the plus sign on the very top here so you can select that plus sign and you can create a new folder you can then right click and rename it so you have um, something that's called shed or whatever you want to call this first project and then you can take that folder and just drag it over to this left side and you can see I get a plus sign there and I'm able to just drop that onto my list um, and I can move it up and down you know if, if this is more important than something else I'm working on. I can move that to the top. And then it's always sitting here ready for you to be able to save things inside of. So I'm just going to open that and I'm going to save my project um, right inside of this folder. And you can name it whatever you'd like, just something that makes sense. Okay, so um, Revit does a really good job of saving what are called journal entries or backup files. So it's sa automatically saving a backup file of the thing that you're working on pretty often. And then it's also, and you can set, and you can adjust what that is, but the default settings are just fine. Um, and then it's also will, if you've got, if you go away from your computer and come back, it will also do a really good job of, of just asking you to save again. So it does a pretty good job of doing that, but you always want to be save and save often. If you've done something major with the project, you want to save and save often, save again. Okay, so this is our um, project here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my floor plan. Now, normally I would put in my site plan first um, because I would have that information and I would place that on here. The site plan on this particular project is just arbitrary um, because we don't know the size of the site, so it's difficult to put that in um, and have that match up. So I'm going to put in my floor plan first. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is under the floor, component here is I'm going to select wall so that we can put the wall in and so I'm going to select underneath the wall I'm going to select wall and then wall architectural and underneath that you can see that on the properties box here I have a whole list of different types of walls I do not have one that is uh, would be for my particular project so I'm going to have to take one of these walls and I'm going to have to make it my own so I'm going to start with the 4 and 7 eighths one hour partition. So I'm going to start with that. So it says basic wall, um, 4 and 7 eighths partition, one hour. And right next to it, I'm going to select edit type. Now this is something, again, in Revit that you will repeat this process over and over and over again. You have something that you're going to insert into the project, but you want to make modifications to it. You're going to automatically select edit type. Um, that's what you're going to do eight times out of 10 in order to make a change to something. So I'm first going to duplicate this wall because I still want this wall to exist, um, but I, this is not the particular wall that I want to use. So I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it my exterior wall with siding. And I'm going to say, OK, um, it's not really important what you name it other than you want to be specific about what the material is made out of. 
And then under structure, um, I'm going to select edit there under structure, this very first component. Now you can see here that this is all of the different components that are making up my wall. So on the very top here it says exterior side and then on the bottom part it says interior side. So the first thing I'm going to change on this very bottom where it says gypsum wallboard, it says interior side, I'm going to select this very tiny dot 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 right next to gypsum wallboard. So if I click in gypsum wallboard, I get this dot dot dot. I'm going to click on that dot 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 and it's going to open up my materials browser slowly. Okay, and so then I want to be able to put some kind of um, plywood sheathing, for example, would be um, a good material that I'm going to put on the inside of my shed. I wouldn't have gypsum board. Um, that's not very practical to be able to hang up rakes and things. So I'm going to select this plywood sheathing wood, and I'm just going to double click that. And all of these materials up here are in alphabetical order. And I'm going to say, okay. So underneath that wall, underneath the structure, I had to close because I always forget that my recording um, element has a little bit of a disconnect whenever I access the material editor, it crashes the program. Um, so what we have here is under, so we've changed that to plywood. I've changed on that interior side, I've changed my thickness to three quarters of an inch. Uh, my metal stud layer is still at three and five eighths. Um, and I could change this to a wood stud if I wanted to, if that was the particular um, construction of this project, and then three and a half inches. Um, and then on my exterior side, so I have, I'm, I also changed that to plywood sheathing, and I've changed it instead of to a finish, I've changed it to a substrate. And again, I've changed my thickness there to three quarters of an inch. And then I've added a finish layer. So I highlight one of my layers on the substrate layer and I say insert and that allows me to have another layer um, on top of these. And if you need to move them up or down, you can highlight a layer and you can see I can move it up and I can move it down depending on um, where that element is. So I've selected that as a finish, so that's a finish element. And then under my materials here, I've selected siding. So I'm gonna, um, on the dot 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 there, I'm able to select clapper siding. And if you don't have that up on top here, um, if you type in siding, then down on the bottom you will find clapboard siding. You double click this um, and it'll put it up top here and then you can select it as a material. And I'm just gonna say cancel because like I said, otherwise it um, crashes my program. Um, so then you have a wall that looks something like this. It gives you a total thickness of the wall up here on top at five and five eighths. And I'm gonna say, okay. And okay. All right, so now you can see over on the left here, there's a little preview of what my wall looks like. And um, I'm using that particular type of wall right now. And then over on this right hand side, you can see that I have a bunch of different shapes that I can use to make a wall. So I can use a straight line, I can use a rectangle. Um, so there's a bunch of different forms and shapes that I can use to make that wall. And so I'm going to select my rectangle tool to be able to um, make my wall. And my building is eight feet by 12 feet. And so I'm just going to establish that here. Um, and I'm going to hit escape first because I had wall center line. So right now it says wall center line and um, it's eight feet by 12 feet to the finish face exterior. So I'm just going to change on my green bar here that to finish face exterior. And I'm going to again go in here and make that shape. So I have my eight feet um, by 12 feet building. Okay. And I accidentally nudged that the wrong direction. So I'm just going to select the wall to the right and just change that dimension to 12 feet. So there we have um, eight feet by 12 feet building established with its different layers um, of the wall. So I'm just gonna take that and move that into the middle of my um, exterior building elevations. I don't have to be very exact about it, I just want it to be close. So then on my grade level, I'm gonna then put in my site information and that'll be in the next video. Thanks.